Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Stronger TV. My name is Dan Pope. We don't have Kiefer Lammy. He's actually behind the camera right now. We still love you, Kiefer. Still love you. Uh, here with Mike Service, my good friend right here. My best Power Monkey friend. Fitness Camp friend. Yep, but and maybe one of, of my best friends ever. How about that? That's big. That was big. So today, we are at Power Monkey Fitness Camp. We're learning a lot about Olympic weightlifting, right? Uh, Mike's station is all about the snatch. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the hot topics that I really get kind of fired up about, that's really interesting, is what is the safest overhead position for the shoulder, right? So when we snatch, I'm catching that bar all the way overhead, little precarious position for the shoulder. Sometimes we get hurt a little bit, right? Yeah. So what is the most optimal position overhead? So yeah, everybody that I come across, they want a black or white answer. They want to say, okay, yeah, I went to this clinic and they said we have to externally rotate, pinch our shoulders back to, you know, don't spill the water, all, all these different things. Um, oh yeah, no, I went to this other clinic and this coach said that all of his athletes, they actually internally rotate because it loads the upper back muscle and you do, you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, wow, I like to, on right? everybody. Yeah, there. no, 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 I love everybody. And, and I, think that, I think that all these coaches and all these um, theories and these methods, they, they apply and they work depending on who they're working with. Mm -hmm. um, so certain athletes internally rotate their shoulders more and they overdevelop those muscles mm -hmm. through hours and days and weeks and years of training. Um, other athletes have really good scapular mobility mm -hmm. and you might notice that they can really externally rotate, stack through their joints and stay healthy. Mm -hmm. um, but, but when I look at either of those methods, if you try to push one of them too far, I think you expose different areas for injuries or overuse. Yep. Um, and, I, and I definitely take an alternative approach to what to focus on in terms of shoulder orientation. Okay, sweet. Um, so a couple thoughts, I have a few thoughts on what's maybe optimal for the shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, I think before I start talking about that, I think the big controversy is you have some people out there that really like to be aggressive with their head forward position, mm -hmm. just like this. And then we're more along the lines of, we wanna be stacked a little mm -hmm. more from this perspective. Yeah. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, so I, I, I look at balance and, and like you said, stacking. Mm -hmm. So I wanna see that the body is as vertical and stacked so that all of the pressure coming down from weight will continue like straight down with as many joints under it. Yep. Um, so when I see lifters that go head through excessively in an overhead squat or that forward pitch, I think you do get a lot of overuse on the joints. Mm -hmm. So like on the front of that shoulder capsule, I think that's the area that has to, has to absorb a lot of pressure, has to absorb a lot of horizontal force. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think that rotator cuff, that front part of the capsule is really made for that. Mm. Okay, cool. Um, so a couple thoughts here. When you go fully overhead, if I am here, I'm more of my mid range of motion. If I go here, I'm more towards end range of motion, mm -hmm. right? And my thought, and I agree with you, Mike. So basically in our shoulder joints, we have a roll and a glide. So basically when I bring my arm overhead, the ball will spin in the socket, but also will glide. Mm -hmm. When I go fully overhead, I'm gonna have a little bit more glide of the joint. So I think because of that, you are exposing the joint more to a little bit more anterior stress, just mm -hmm. like you're saying. Plus, if you think about the position where you caught that snatch, the bar, the, the uh, shoulder joint is being forced this way, right? Through the front of the shoulder joint. So yeah, it can be more stressed from that perspective. The other thought I have is that whenever you take a joint to the very end range of motion, it's not as strong as it would be at a mid range of motion. Mm -hmm. And the other thought is that I think a lot of athletes will come forward from here for two different reasons. For one, I think a lot of athletes are stronger when they're more forward, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm a back squatting, generally I'm a little bit more inclined this way, I can support a little more load than when I'm upright and trying to squat this way. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times athletes are coming forward this way just because it's a little stronger position for the hips. The other thing is that when you fully stretch the shoulder back this way, you're probably getting a little support from the anterior capsule, just like you said. So you get a little stretch in the front, the pecs are stretched, a lot of musculature is stretched, so you maybe have a little bit of support and stability from there, but I think it's also a little bit more stressful for the joint. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last little bit, and I know I'm kind of ranting here, but at the very end range of motion, we just have more compression on the rotator cuff. So a super popular test is called the NEARS test in orthopedic medicine. So basically, can I do it on you real quick? Yep. Take someone's arm, and it was originally just hold the shoulder blade down and bring it overhead. Over the course of time, we've added some internal rotation. And the idea is at the very end range of motion, we get more compression yeah. on the rotator cuff, especially if we go into internal rotation just like this. So if I'm lifting, I really don't want to be in a lot of internal rotation, right, and full end range flexion, because it's probably going to stress that cuff a little bit more. Yeah, and again, yeah. this, is, this is theory, 
I don't really know. And to your point, if you have a whole bunch of athletes that do this from a super young age and build all that strength and stability and maybe some of them drop out because they get hurt and then you just have more and more that rise to the top, that technique can be effective, yeah. you know, but who gets hurt in the process and is that the healthiest for everyone? And, you know? and, and a lot of times, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm uh, guilty of it as well, like specialty coaches, weightlifting coaches, gymnastics coaches, we work with really small sample sizes and really small specific populations. Mm -hmm. um, the, the cool thing about being in a, a more general fitness arena is now you get exposed to these, these more wide range varying uh, backgrounds, athletes, body types. And, and just from my you know, practical application of things is, yeah, that, that over excessive internal. I mean, you just did that test to me and it made my shoulder pinch. Um, nice. If you open my shoulder up, um, it, feels, it feels like a good stretch. It feels stacked. It feels like something I need to, need to be working on and need to be doing. You got it. And the one thing I will say, because I've been, I just go around like to ask a lot of the coaches around here. So um, Cheryl, right? Cheryl Hayworth and Vanessa McCoy and, and Chad um, Vaughn over here. So all accomplished weightlifters like yourself and then coach thousands of athletes. And you guys all kind of say the same thing. So you kind of stack it up this way. Mm -hmm. So the kind of the counter argument is like, well, some of the best lifters in the world, they go head through. So it's got to be the best position. And what I will say is I think that's, that's short-sighted, right? Um, there's a variety of ways to skin the cat. And when it comes to joint health, it's not the always same thing as joint performance. Yep. And I think we see that in a lot of sports. And I yep. think this is one of those situations where that's happening. And I think all the, all the coaches here at Power Monkey too come in with a little dis different perspective on movement. Yep. Um, yeah, we want to maximize people's potential and athletic performance, but we absolutely want to like, uh, maximize their longevity. Mm -hmm. So we want to see people move well for a long time. Mm -hmm. If you look at really high level weightlifters, they want to lift a really big weight as soon as they can. Yep. Um, so they will put themselves into maybe some positions that aren't ideal long term. They yep. might be strong and stable, but for how long? Yeah. So they might be strong and stable until they pop. pop. Mm. And, and that's one thing that you see. Like injuries are not that common in weightlifting, but the common injuries are blown out elbows, blown out AC joints, torn labrums. Mm. Um, and those are from putting your body in some extreme positions and not balancing out or not finding that, that comfortable, strong position that you can repeat forever. Cool. Um, so we just talked a ton about this. This is very theoretical. One of the things I'd really like for you is to show me what your favorite overhead position is for the snatch and where the bar should be ending up for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, so the, the, the easiest thing that, that I'll tell everybody is, is if we take a little bit of emphasis off the shoulder orientation and we think about where the barbell is located on our body. Um, so in terms of just a really easy exercise to start feeling that out is going to be snatch grip behind the neck. Um, to go behind the neck, you're automatically in an externally rotated position with your shoulder. So if I try to internally rotate my shoulders and press, I can't. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. So for me to press, I have to externally rotate the shoulders, press overhead, and my goal should be to have that bar over the midline of my body, and that's going to have everything where it needs to be. So I'm going to have as much external rotation as my shoulders will allow um, in that full locked out balanced position. If I take that position and go overhead and I try to dump my shoulders internal, I'm already like having to start compensating or moving the bar around and I'm getting away from my body's midline, which I don't want to do. Okay. I like that. Well, I think that's it. Do you have anything to add? No, I think um, for, for the most case, like whether you're, you know, you're, you're a physical therapist, a chiropractor working with athletes that are maybe coming in from shoulder injury, um, or you're a coach or, or you're an athlete yourself is um, just look, look at a movement. And, and think of it structurally, like, like be a little bit logical and say, if I do this over time, over and over and over again, am I setting my joints up to be safe and to stay consistent and repeated with their movements? Okay, awesome. Well, thank you very much, Mike. I really appreciate it. Yep. As always, if you guys like this, please hit that subscribe button. We thank you very much and we'll see you on the next subscribe episode. It. What's that?